Hello again. I am Chris Lee of Southeastern 14, presented by Bearded Iris, here to do some SEC and NCA baseball bracketology. This is our first attempt this year. Everything is up to date through games of Wednesday, April the 19th. So let me get started. Just a few things first that you might want to know. Uh, everything again up to date. It is very thorough. Uh, I will show you my work in a minute. It's based on what has happened right now and not projection of what might happen, which is what some of the national guys are doing. And I, I don't have an issue with that. I'm just going to do mine differently. So I pay attention to where teams are now because there's a lot of the season to go and a lot of stuff could happen. And there's going to be more importantly than the rankings. I want you to pay attention to some things I point out with particular resumes because this will change down the line. And yes, this is original. I do look at D1 and BA. Love and respect their work. Those guys are friends of mine. I wouldn't say a bad word about any of them. They're outstanding. But they put on an insane amount of work, too. And sometimes they miss a few things. And I might have caught a couple things that you're not seeing showing up nationally. Now, in the bracket, there are going to be 31 auto bids. So there's going to be 33 at-larges. There's probably going to be 17, maybe 18 one-bid leagues. So I'm ranking teams one to whatever. And you want to be in the top 46 or 47 to make sure that you get yourself a bid and then hope there are no upsets. So with that, uh, that means, again, 46, 47 teams probably get in at, at the top regardless of winning their conference. I'll cover every SEC, SEC team. I'll look at host possibilities and a few other items of interest on the way, and I will attempt to share my screen here. We'll go ahead and do that, and you can see everything that I'm looking at. And here we go. Here's my screen. You can see all the teams I've got here. We're started at the top. Wake Forest is my number one overall seed. Let me go through all these things here. I've got some green flags and some red and pink flags based on things that are good and things that maybe aren't so good. And with Wake, it's all pretty good. You get a green flag if you're at least 20 games over 500 in your overall record. And I think you've won at least two-thirds of your conference games. You can see RPI, strength to schedule right here. You can see non-conference RPI, non-conference strength to schedule, road record neutral, and then various quadrants of the RPI, not to mention who you beat. That's kind of important, too. So, Wake, you look at that team. I think it's the best team in the country. Uh, I think it's got the best resume in the country to this point. Not a lot there not to like. Non-conference strength to schedule, not great, but. Boy, uh, everything else is something to like. Predictive rank. This is something that does not appear in the NCAA rankings. I just do it. I look at other computers to see okay, really good how, do, how good do computers really think these teams are outside the RPI. So it's averaging about four computers, and that's where those rank these teams. Again, that's not relevant to what we're doing, uh, but it is kind of interesting. Number two, I've got LSU. Uh, LSU's got a week out of conference schedule. That – might ding LSU a, a spot, but I doubt it. Uh, if LSU wins the thing convincingly, wins the SEC, LSU is probably going to be the number one overall national seed. And LSU has beaten a number of really good teams so far, as you can see. Third is Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's got a really good resume. Get dinged a little bit with a midweek loss to Indiana State this week. Uh, but the Commodores have beaten some good teams. The only really bad thing on Vandy's resume is, is a loss outside the RPI, top 150. Uh, if you see anybody that's got a loss there, I put a flag there. So Vanderbilt does have one loss there. Everything else in the resume looks really good. Outstanding record against top 50 RPI teams. Uh, Vandy has banked a lot so far and is in great shape with the second half of the SEC season to come. Now, Kentucky, I've got it four. And again, remember, I'm not projecting. I'm going based on what is happening now. And Kentucky may be the only team, a couple of them, that you don't have any pink in here or red in here anywhere. Kentucky has just aced it across the board so far. Good road record, 10 wins on the road, uh, 17 and, and 6 against the RPI top 50. Now, here's if you want to ding Kentucky a little bit, some of these teams in here are, are not outstanding. LSU is the only team that's beaten that's, that's going to host. Well, Indiana's actually probably going to host as of right now. So that, that's another one. But a lot of these teams are twos and threes. Elon's a team I'll get to in a little bit. Elon is a team that I think the resume is great. I'm not sure how good the team is. 
Mississippi State's a borderline tournament team. We'll get to State in a minute. But if you dig into the wins a little bit, they maybe don't wow you as much as all this over here does. But uh, Kentucky has had a tremendous season so far, really has taken care of business, has not suffered a bad loss. And I think right now you're seeing Kentucky is a, is a double-digit seed nationally, which means it would host one weekend but not two. I, I just don't see it right now based on the resume. I think Kentucky, in my mind, would be a team hosting two weekends. Now we'll see how that pans out as he schedule gets a little bit tougher. I've got Virginia at five, Arkansas at six. Again, the Razorbacks, kind of like Vandy, not a lot there to complain about. Um, you know, maybe this, you'd like to see a few more wins. That, that, I guess that's the big thing. Arkansas is only three and three on the road. So it's done a lot of its damage in Fayetteville. Arkansas will have a chance to get that road record better. That's maybe the one thing that stands out in these top seven or eight seeds is all of them have got better road records than Arkansas. But Arkansas has beaten some good teams, as you'll see over here, too, and I think deserving right now of a top eight national seed. All right, I've got Florida at the number seven national seed. And by the way, this number over here uh, is just something I use for my reference to tell me when I've updated a team, and I do all this manually. So I might have missed something. And if you spot something, drop that in the comments. The, the Gators uh, – Probably the biggest thing is two losses outside the top 100 in the RPI. When you dig into the wins, two wins over Miami, a couple wins over an Alabama team that I think is a two seed right now, but a low two seed, and the Tennessee team that that right now is is barely in, not in. I don't know. We'll get to the Vols later. So Florida's wins when you dig in. Maybe not as impressive as some of the numbers over here would suggest, but I think Florida would would be a top eight national seed today. Now, South Carolina, I think South Carolina is better than the number eight national seed, but that's not what we're doing here. We're doing resumes, and the, the RPI is good, uh, but you see some issues over here. 16 of those wins came outside the top 100 in the RPI. You look at who they beat, Vandy. LSU, North Carolina, or tournament teams for sure. Auburn, Mississippi State, maybe tournament teams at this point. Again, we'll get to those later. So when you dig into the wins, South Carolina's got some work to do. Winning a second game against Vandy and Nashville this weekend would have helped, and, and Carolina will have plenty of opportunity and I think can move up. But that's kind of the ding on Carolina's resume right now is you, you want to see a little bit more good work over here, uh, but – there's also this. Uh, Carolina is really taking care of business, no bad losses, and, and a pretty good record against the RPI top 50. East Carolina is a team uh, that, again, has got a little bit of bad over here. And, and the wins when you dig in are, are, are nice, maybe not tremendous. But in the American, you don't get as many chances to play. Good out-of-conference RPI and strength of schedule. I think East Carolina right now is a pretty easy pick as a top 10 seed nationally. Now, I think there's a little bit of a drop-off when we go from ECU to Coastal Carolina. Coastal has got some, some decent metrics, but the overall record, not great. 24-11, and 11, just 13 games over 500, although the strength of schedule is strong. Coastal's done some good stuff on the road, but does have a couple of 150 or worse losses. Texas... Uh, you'd like to see a little bit more over here, but not a lot of bad over there. The RPI is solid. Texas leading the Big 12. Miami dropped a little bit after a midweek loss on Wednesday. The RPI is good. These are things you'd like to see get a little bit better, but not, not a whole lot of bad and some nice wins over here. Indiana, now look at this. It, the other computers outside the RPI are not crazy about the Hoosiers, and I'm not either, but you're seeing a lot of people picking Indiana as a host team right now. And I think based on this and this, it probably is uh, a lot of games on the road, although a sub 500 road record, but not a lot of bad over here. Uh, one bad loss. If you want to consider RPI losses outside the top 100 bad losses. So Indiana has done some good things. Um, you know, maybe three wins against teams that I know are in the field for sure. We'll get to these teams, Iowa and Auburn, in a little bit. Oregon and Stanford at 14 and 15. Again, I, I would like to see a little bit more out of these teams. Um, but anyway, uh, and then we get to 15, and I think that's where kind of having a hard time filling it out. I've got Campbell is the last hosting team for now. Louisville could be there. 
I think that record and that record need to get a little better for Louisville to host, but Louisville certainly in striking distance. A lot of people have Connecticut hosting. Here's my problem, though. It's this, it's the losses over here, and it's who did they beat. Boston College is the only team that I'm certain is going to be in the tournament that Connecticut has beaten. So I, I think Connecticut may need some more high-end wins. Now, geography is going to be part of it, and they like to put a host in the Northeast and Connecticut because of that RPI. And Boston College was the darling earlier. That was the team that everybody had hosting, but BC is starting to show some cracks. A lot of people have Connecticut hosting. I'm not going to tell you that's wrong, but I'm just telling you I wouldn't do it because you look over here, and, and I just don't see a lot that has blown me away. You know, maybe this team was 30-7. and seven. I would feel a little differently. And you can see the, the non-predictive computers see them more as a two-seed than a host. Okay, let's go down some other things. I think Southern Miss, a team that could work its way into the hosting picture. Same with Oklahoma State. That's got to get better. Somebody in the Big 12 is probably going to host. It's probably going to be the champion. Maybe that will end up being Oklahoma State, which did take a couple against Texas. Who knows? This is another team to watch right here, North Carolina State. And that is the reason I don't have NC State hosting right now on an 8-9 record. But look at this. Top 10 RPI, top 10 strength to schedule. Uh, Bank some good wins over here. I think if NC State starts bumping that record a few games over 500 in the ACC, that's going to be a team that's going to be moving up here into the hosting mix. And who knows, maybe even as a top eight national seed. So that's something that I would watch. Dallas Baptist, another team that is getting mentioned as a potential uh top 16 seed and the predictive computers kind of like them think that's a really good team the record 28 nine that's very good 12 and three in the Missouri Valley which is a decent league um you know not not a great out of conference strength to schedule but this is really sound uh, 11 and one against teams 51 to 100 but not a lot of top end wins Oklahoma State's the only team I think that Dallas Baptist has beaten that's probably going to be in the field right now. So, I mean, excusing, accepting maybe conference champions have won big leagues, things like that. But not not a lot of big resume wins for Dallas Baptist, but nonetheless a good team. Indiana State, another team that's going to get some talk as a host. I think Indiana State is, is kind of game the system. And it did beat Vandy and Nashville this week. Uh, not a lot of bad over here, but you start digging into the wins. That's really all they've got of consequence so far, but in, in a 23 and 12 record overall, not great, but you can see the RPI, the strength, the schedule, the out of league. Indiana State is probably going to be a slam dunk as a two seed. I just don't see them as a hosting caliber team, and, and some of the other computers over here would agree. Duke, another team that they could move up. The computers really like Duke, it's banked some good wins. Uh, needs to get a little bit above that right now. We'll see. Same with North Carolina. We're getting down to Alabama. I see Alabama as the number 28 team overall, which means it's pretty solidly in as a two seed, although that could be a problem. Uh, six and nine overall in the SEC. I think if you're Alabama, you just want to make sure you get to 13 or 14 conference wins, which is doable, uh, but not a lot of bad over here. And you see some wins they banked. They've beaten some, some decent teams. So I think Alabama, a team that I would have a hard time dropping below the two seed line, Overall, nationally, you get some interesting teams here. TCU is a very interesting team. The RPI, not great. The overall record, not great. But I think most people have them in. They bank some nice wins. I think the Big West is kind of interesting. I'm not going to dive into that much. But you've got Fullerton, uh, which most have as a three C, but it's winning that conference, the Big West, which is a decent league at 12 and three. You see Santa Barbara's got a better RPI, but a much worse conference record. Uh, and, of course, Fullerton beat them two or three. So the Big West is kind of interesting to watch. Some more things of note, Texas Tech is probably a two or three seed right now, but that RPI not very good. Um, that also is going to hurt Texas Tech if it's borderline. That Big 12 record needs to get better. Tech seems to be a team that is perpetually in a regional, so we'll see how that goes. Arizona State, that, that's another team of interest. Arizona State is, I believe, leading the Pac-12. But, man, you get into some ugliness when you get over here into that. No games against top 25 RPI teams. One in seven against 26 to 50. Uh, 11 and three here, which is, that's like playing the NIT, I guess. 
And that is the only team of consequence that Arizona State has beaten. Now, look, if Arizona State wins the Pac-12, it's going to get some wins against some good teams. And the computers like Arizona State, although it got clobbered by Arizona on Wednesday night. But that's a team where there's a, a disconnect between where that RPI is and, and what they've actually done over here. Elon, another team, I don't think Elon is as good as maybe the resume. Uh, look at that. Um, but it's beaten some good teams. Northeastern has got a 29-7 and seven record. Uh, has beaten some nice teams over here, too. I think they're solidly in. The next SEC team, Texas A&M. The predictive computers like the Aggies is probably a two. The, the resume, uh, you know, you'd like to see a little better. Texas Tech, LSU, if Auburn gets in, those are two wins that'll help. Uh, a little red over here, you don't like to see that. Uh, not a lot of road games so far, period, and not a great out-of-conference schedule. But I think a &M would solidly be in the field right now if it were picked. Okay, now we get to three SEC teams. I'm not seeing Missouri on anybody's, but if you go by resume, I think Missouri's got a better resume than some other SEC teams that are getting love. As a, as a team in. Now, look, they've all got this same problem. It's that 5-10 and 10 record. Missouri has played a lot of its games on the road, pretty good neutral record, good RPI, good strength of schedule, not a great out-of-conference strength of schedule, but did beat some teams, as you see over here. Missouri's issue is going to have two losses in, in the bad column over here, uh, and you would like to see a better record against the top 25. But I think right now, and frankly, I think it's just because it's Missouri. I think Missouri has got a better resume probably by just a little bit than Auburn and Mississippi State. Okay, State is very interesting because two weeks ago, I would have laughed if you said this is a team that is going to be in consideration for a bid. But State has played its way in the discussion. Again, that's going to be a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem, but some good wins, as you can see over here. Um, State's got some work to do, but it's put itself in position. Auburn, another team that's put itself in position, particularly with some work it did out of the league in taking series from Indiana and Southern Cal. Uh, not, not a ton of bad over here. Two losses outside the top 100. Um not a good record on the road at all. Three and nine is, is pretty bad. That's going to be something that dings Auburn a little bit. But an RPI and a strength of schedule that have got Auburn squarely in the mix of consideration. Now, UC Irvine is a team that I don't think anybody's got in the field. I think they should be there. That's the problem. But you look at some teams they've beaten. I think Irvine should be getting a little bit more love. Let's go to Tennessee. I think Tennessee is the most interesting team to discuss right now. And again, I said that cutoff line probably around 46, 47. Tennessee, if you do it today, the Vols maybe are the last team in. But my goodness, you start looking at the, the pink and the red over here, and there's a lot of it. Tennessee's just nine games over 500 overall. It's five and 10 in the league. RPI in range, strength to schedule in range. Bat out of conference, strength of schedule. Look, I don't really judge Tennessee for that because it is playing a brutal schedule in the league. Now, that's horrible. One and nine on the road. That, that's going to be something. You don't see any team on this sheet anywhere. And I go way beyond the end of the bubble that's got a record anywhere near what Tennessee's got. Two and 11 against the top 25 RPI. Now, a lot of those were close losses, but they didn't win. Three and 0 against 25 to 50. 0 and 2 against what I call the NIT over here. And then 18 wins coming 100 and up against the RPI. That's not what you want to see. You want to see more wins coming from over here than over here. No, is Tennessee good enough to get in the tournament? Absolutely. Is it good enough to get to Omaha? Absolutely. But we're talking about resume, and that's really lacking. You can see some other teams here. A lot of people have Xavier, Iowa, Troy in, Rutgers in, Maryland in. I just don't. You look at the resumes, you can see the things that I've, I've kind of flagged here. Iowa, look at that. That's that's a lot of red over here, although it does have some good wins. Uh, some other teams, you know, Michigan State, Georgia Tech, I mean, fringe, fringe, fringe bubble teams. Nobody's talking about. But I think the thing to me is I, I see a block of teams here they're getting a lot of love that when I compare resumes, I don't see as much as maybe the people that are doing these nationally are doing. All right, some other SEC teams. Georgia, 
Georgia's got a 28 RPI. Now, that's the problem. Georgia's not getting in right now. If Georgia were to hit a heater and, and say, get to 12 or 13 SEC wins, which I think is going to be very difficult, you would see Georgia getting some love. Ole Miss, same thing. RPI not quite as good, but Ole Miss has banked some nice wins. I think Ole Miss has probably got too much to bite off to get there, but but this is an SEC channel, and so I just wanted to cover all those teams. And so now you see. In any case, uh, thank you for watching our breakdown of NCAA baseball as it pertains to regionals and national seeds. We're going to be doing recaps of Thursday night games, Friday games, Saturday games, and Sunday games. Those will be up the a.m. the next day for the most part. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Subscribe will help you get those videos pop up when we make them. Uh, the like button helps our analytics. We'll have more SEC baseball content. We do power rankings every week. We're going to do hitter and pitcher rankings when I've got time to get to those. Anyway, we are Southeastern 14 presented by Bearded Iris. I'm Chris Lee. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.